no other TV station in the Des Moines area goes back as far as the one that's right next door. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about WOI, Local 5 here in Des Moines. Yeah. And Professor Jeff Stein has a very special Iowa Almanac this, mor this morning talking about their big anniversary. Well, good morning. Normally, when we talk about these stories here on the television, it's the same story that I tell the audience statewide on the Iowa Almanac radio segment. Today, there's an exception. So if you want to hear how the town of Muscatine in southeast Iowa got its name, roll on over to iowaalmanac.com when you get a chance or listen to one of the 29 radio stations across the state that air the program and you can hear that story. But this is a special anniversary right where you guys are in the TV building in West Des Moines because it was on this date, February 21st, 1950, 70 years ago, that WOI-TV, now known as Local 5, first went on the air. It was only the second television station on the air in Iowa, beaten only by Davenport's WOC, which went on the air on Halloween in 1949. So literally, not even four months later, WOI-TV went on the air, at the time owned by Iowa State University and licensed to Ames. Now, how that all came about is a bit of a story in and of itself. The Iowa State University folks, then Iowa State College, put in a license for one of the very first experimental radio stations in the early part of the 1900s, that, of course, WOI Radio, and it was a non-commercial educational station. So when the university thought, let's add a television station, logical extension to radio, they presumed they were applying for one of those educational TV licenses. Imagine their surprise when the FCC not only granted a license to Iowa State, but that it was one of the commercial licenses. And that meant that WOI was the first commercial station in the entire country to be owned by a major college or university. It went on the air 70 years ago today on Channel 4. I did say Channel 4. It did not become Channel 5 until two years later as part of a nationwide frequency adjustment so that more TV stations could fit into the limited spectrum. Now, we know Channel 5 is an ABC station, but since it was the first to be on the air in central Iowa, it originally began as an affiliate of all four TV networks in business at that time. It was primarily a CBS affiliate at first, that then carried additional programs from NBC, ABC, and the Dumont Network. But when Channel 13 went on the air as an NBC affiliate in 1954, and Channel 8 went on the air as a CBS affiliate in 1955, and Dumont went out of business not long after that, well, Channel 5 was left with ABC as their sole network. That turned out to be a pretty good thing because by the mid-1970s, ABC was the number one network in America. Originally, anything live on television in the early 1950s was simply read by an announcer with a slide or an image on the screen. Because you see, Channel 5, as we now know it, WOI, went on the air without studio cameras. Anything that was on the air that was visual was recorded on film, which was then driven to the transmitter site out in the country and played on the air. So again, if it was live, you heard a live voice, but there was a slide or some image on the screen. And if you saw moving images, that meant it was on film, this is before videotape, of course, that was then driven out and played at the transmitter site. Well, of course, soon there were studios on campus and the material was sent to that remote transmitter site via cables and then later by a microwave link. Programming such as The Whole Town's Talking was a staple of the early days, one of the award-winning programs. It's interesting that WOI is now called Local 5, but it's always been local. That program, The Whole Town's Talking, was funded by a half-million-dollar grant from the Ford Foundation. That's a lot of money now. It was even more money, it seemed, back in the 1950s. This is where they would literally take the cameras to a town, and they'd set up in a coffee shop or a schoolroom, and they'd interview local people about what was going on in their individual community. And, of course, 
there's no, no more local program that you could find than the Magic Window. The longest running, locally produced children's show in America on the air for 43 years until 1994. And for 40 of those years, Betty Lou was the one there with Katrina and Gregory and uh, opening the curtain, turning on the motor, turning on the lights for the cartoons to come up. And of course, all those wonderful crafts. Oh, so many other things that WOI originated live. Visha parades from the heart of the Iowa State campus. The first local television station to originate a college football game live via satellite. That happened in San Diego when they sent it back to Iowa. That was before ESPN was doing such things on a regular basis. It's a proud history, and it's now 70 years worth of history. Because it was on this date in 1950 that WOI-TV first went on the air from Iowa State University in Ames. And I had the great pleasure to sit down with Jack Miller of Local 5 and talk about some of this history. You may be seeing some of that on the air. And it's supposed to also be online at weareiowa.com as part of the anniversary. So if you want to learn a little more, that might be a place to do it. A special Iowa Almanac for you today. And of course, as always, online with our regular story at iowaalmanac.com. Also Twitter and Instagram at Iowa Almanac. So happy birthday to Local 5. And I'll talk to you all again Monday morning. There you go. Thank you, Professor Jeff Stein. And we are with one of the cameras. You can Look see this, Lori. Is this awesome or this what? This is crazy. And it took almost three people to get it to out. To bring here. it over That's from right next door. Were. And you can see that I'm going to try to spin this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Watch the uh, watch the lenses in the front here. Uh, we're okay, going to try to turn the, turn the lens. I'm just gonna slowly, right. slowly. Right. Now, in case they wanted to change. Oh, there we go. We want to change camera. Uh, like what kind of camera shot you have. Right. Let's, that's all. That's how like you did got, it. This is how you did it. You had to turn right. this like this. And if we, can you zoom in here, Doug, and look up here? You mentioned Dumont. It says Dumont right above the, mm -hmm. the lenses themselves, uh, the network for that. So uh, one of four that's networks incredible. that it was, the Dumont Television. So these uh, antique items that are floating around the building still. Well, not floating. They're pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're pretty they don't stationary. Go <laughs> easily. I'll tell you that. But no, they're, I mean, they're just, what a conversation this is piece. It's history, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. history. And I'm glad that they kept this, mm -hmm. you know, because it's just a reminder when you see the cameras that they have right now they're a fraction of this and the same thing with the weight and when people are out reporting in the field you know that's one of those things like when they talk about continuity directors mm -hmm. and films and things and right. you see some of the cameras that they try to show not remotely realistic mm -hmm. the guys behind the scenes you know yeah. how nimble things have to be nowadays right. certainly couldn't lug this, this thing is around work it started with things yeah. like this one here there you have it folks happy birthday local five and many more to come watch local five they have more reports on their birthday celebration coming up all all day long today.